Welcome back. I'm George. And uh, as promised, now we're going to talk about the Pulse Wave Modulator. The first thing I need to ask you to do, though, is please subscribe, uh, share us with your friends, and if you would, oh, it really helps. Comment below, and uh, we'll answer your comments. We'd love it. Just the more information we get, the better off our community is. Now, Pulse Wave Modulation. Remember we talked about that. We talked about that sine wave and then the duty cycle in time. Now, I don't want to get too technical because you don't really need to. Remember we talked about the infinite switch on a stove and that when you turn the switch on, the bimetal connector inside there starts to heat up and when it gets to a certain temperature, it deforms and causes the contacts to disconnect. And then what that does is it shuts it off. So you got it on low, your heater element on your stove gets like six to eight seconds worth of 240 volts, and then it shuts off until that bimetal connector cools. And it cools in about 10 to 15 seconds, and then it comes back on, and then it goes back off. So what that is is this can be considered a very, very uh, rudimentary pulse wave modulator. And so what that does is it takes, we're, gonna, we're looking at that sine wave and we're looking at you know, the amount of average power over a period of time and it were 25%, it sees that and your, your voltage and your amperage will adjust accordingly over that full period of time if you're only using 25% of the duty cycle. Oh boy, I know, I, I don't wanna lose you. Look, here's what I've got though. I'm, I'm gonna set this up real quick and we're gonna test the one that I've got built, I've got a pulse wave modulator right here, and that little puppy looks like this, and these run about oh, anywhere from, oh gosh, 20 to $35, and you can get these on Amazon or eBay, they're, they're out there. Uh, this one is a 4,000 watt, 120 volt pulse wave modulator. That's all, just type that in, pulse wave modulator, 120 volt, 4,000 watt. I've also got a 10,000 watt, and they come in 240 models as well. So there, there's, there's a oodles of them out there, and we can take advantage of something that's already built. Here we go. I'll be back with you in just a second. What I have here is I've got a mini grinder, and I've got my pulse wave modulator already encapsulated in this box, and we'll show you how to make one of those. And uh, what I'm going to do, I've plugged it into this already, and I've got this, of course, my pulse wave modulator plugged into 120 volts. And I've turned this all the way up to, it's got uh, 10,000 RPMs, and that's how that little rascal runs. Uh, but, and you'll notice on here that right now I'm showing 17 volts and 0.2 amps, which is nothing. Uh, in it's, that's just what's leaking through into my receptacle. Now watch what happens and listen to, as I start to turn, you'll see that the amperage starts to go up and you can hear my grinder start to turn. Now I got 46 volts and 5.5 uh, amps. Look at there. One point, that's just one amp at 77 volts. Is it 93 volts? 1.1 1 .1 amp and I can turn that all the way up to max and that thing will run 10,000 RPMs. 119 volts, 1.3 amps. Or I can turn it back down. Now if you think about that, theoretically, now that's where at, that works just like your stove connection. So. What is happening here is that my mini uh, grinder uh, sees the apparent, the average power going through that pulse wave modulator and adjusts accordingly. So that's why I've got that voltage and that amperage and I'm able to adjust that back and forth. Now one of the benefits of a pulse wave modulator is that with the components inside, it produces very little heat. So a large heat sink is not necessary and most of them come with a fan that is mounted on top. I'll, I'd, I'd mount one anyway because these only get about 116 or 118 degrees uh, and then you put a fan on there that keeps it cool. So, 
I am going to go to the next part of this test. I'm going to show you what happens when we do it with a three gallon kettle because I got a 3500 watt heating element wired at 120 volts and we already know that if it's a 240 volt element and we wire it for 120 volts we only get 25 percent of the wattage so that's an 875 watt heater element I'm only using that because it's already in the pot and I don't want to go through the changing routine okay so let me get that set up and show you that real quick we're back with the three gallon kettle and that 3500 watt heater element wired at 120 volts so it's only 875 watts but it's going to be hot enough to heat that water anyway now you'll see here I've got the ground a white and a black and that's all it takes uh, and earlier in another video I mentioned that the ground and the white the neutral wire was the same thing I was, I was incorrect uh, only at the first point of entry so in your main box is it the same thing after that they have to make sure that you keep them separated all right right now I've got that set there now watch what happens I'll turn this on and I'm at 23 volts and it's at 0.8 amps and as I continue to turn this up my amperage starts to increase and my voltage increases all the way up until its max voltage which now is 117 volts and that's running to 6.4 amps 6.4 amps at 117 volts and uh, I'm just real happy with that so this heating element is now getting hot and remember whenever you do this never dry fire a heater element it'll snap and dry firing means don't have any water in your pot I've got water in here so that's what I've got and then I can turn that back down so now I can control the heat inside my kettle or inside my brew pot or inside my kiln or anywhere else I have by merely turning the dial up or down now I would call this an analog system because there is no feedback mechanism. The feedback me mechanism lies right here. So I'll be watching the thermometer and I'll be turning the knob appropriately. So if I need more power because I need to raise the temperature, I'll turn the knob up. And if, oh, by chance I go above my temperature, I'll turn the knob back down. But you've got to give it time to settle because that heater element is only going to react to the time it takes for it to get hot and or cold so that makes sense this is such a beautiful thing and these will run you probably all put together if you pull one together yourself with all the pieces and parts they're gonna probably run you about 50 bucks on the outside so keep in mind uh, we're gonna go through uh, a tutorial on how to wire these because there's two different ways of wiring them I've got it wired now to read the voltage going to the heater element uh, next, we're going to do read the voltage that's coming into the box. Real simple. So, until next time, happy distilling.
come all you moonshiners if you want to hear. That's the kind of booze that's the around here. Made way back in.